Hello and welcome! It's been a while since the previous How to Play Algamancy video, but uh, it's time to update it. We're in alpha now. Uh, a lot of things have changed. The rules have changed a lot, the game has changed, but it should be settling down now. So if you're interested in playing, now's a great time to learn because things are more stable. We have all the cards finished, at least preemptively. Um, we're still, you know, this is playtest art, so the art's going to be updated. Um, the names are going to be updated. And a lot of the individual cards themselves will change. Um, but what I mean when I say we have all the cards finished is that the card pool is full. So we, the, the base game is 320 cards. Uh, there's an extra 10 cards of colorless cards that may or may not end up in the game. But like we have all of the plant cards, we have all the water cards, we have all the multicolored cards. So even if I end up changing the individual cards, they at least have like a place that you can play with them right now. So it's exciting. This video is going to be very brief, just to, going to, to kind of like get you started for the feel of Algamancy. Uh, the article, the rules of Algamancy has a lot of these specifics if you're interested in like exactly how things work and stuff like that. Um, but this is just going to be a quick visual demonstration of how to run through a game fairly quickly. So uh, on Tabletopia, this is uh, kind of what we've been using for playtesting. Tabletop Simulator we also have, but Tabletopia is free to use for everyone. So if you're interested in playing, join the Discord and there's going to be a bunch of people starting matches. Um, so you can play whenever. Uh, okay, Algamancy is a multiplayer game at its core. So I'm showing the four player setup. There's a 1v1 mode. There's a free for all mode. So you can play like three player free for all, five player free for all. Um, eight player teams. Um, the intended game mode is six player teams, so like 3v3, but 2v2 works just fine. 1v1, we've been testing a lot. 1v1 is actually quite fun. So, um, yeah, all the formats are good. So, you can play with basically any number of players in really any configuration you want. Um, the default game mode is a live draft, so you don't really come with a deck. It's kind of like drafting in Magic. Um, but you do it in the game. Like, as the game is going, you're drafting your cards to play with. So there's a lot more freedom, I guess, uh, because, like, if you need a removal spell in that turn, you can just draft one. So, you know, you can pick and choose answers as you need them during the game, and you're never really locked out in a bad matchup because your deck is being built as you're playing. Um, there's many other game modes you can play this, like a traditional magic cube where you pre-draft and then you play constructed. Um, there's regular constructed algomancy. So if you're not interested in a live draft, there's still constructed games and all the other stuff uh, to play. Um, the general turn structure will be the same. You just, you know, in constructed, you won't be drafting. Um, there is a draft constructed mode as well, but yeah, you get the gist. Anyway, um, so to start the game of basic algomancy draft, depending on the number of players, uh, you can choose which of the factions you want to play with. Um, for beginners, I would recommend starting with like just fire and wood. Uh, wood is like this plant one. So you could start there. You could start with three. You could play all five factions. Um, I'm going to start with just two. So we'll just do these two. And the multicolored cards here, uh, there's 50 of them. You can add them in. I'll put them in. Um, and what I'm going to do is just sort through the multicolored cards that don't fit my faction in real time. So to start the game out, uh, you deal every single player four cards. Um, you can shortcut this and just deal every player six because they're all going to draw two at the beginning of a turn. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to do it exactly properly. But whenever you play in paper, you know, you can deal them six and it's fine. Um, and then each player gets a pack of 10 cards as well. Take 10. So I'll have my 10. And I'll just demonstrate the player to my right. Uh, no, I'll, do, I'll demonstrate them all. Take 10. Oh, I guess you can't see that. Whatever. Everyone gets a pack of 10. Person's pack will be over here. Okay. Um, so that, and that's how you start the game. Um, and then you draft to start your turn. So the turn order is you draw first. So I'm going to deal two to everybody. And this is why I said... You could effectively just start with six cards. Um, and I put the multicolored cards in, so I know we're going red-green. So if you were playing this in person, any of the multicolored cards that didn't fit your faction, you could just swap out for cards that actually fit what you were playing. I got a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you could just replace them with six more cards. 
Okay, I don't think I shuffled actually. I got so many. Uh, take three more. Alright. So these are all red green cards now. My pack has... Should be 16 cards in it. Yeah, 5, 3, 16. So uh, the way you draft in this game is actually pretty convenient for in person. Um, you just always get the pack down to 10 cards. So you don't have to keep track of how many cards you started in your hand. You don't have to worry about your opponents cheating because all you have to do is count the number of cards that they leave in the pack. And if it's 10 cards, then they took the proper amount. So I started with six cards in hand and the pack started with 10 cards. So I know that I need to take six cards out of it to leave the pack with 10 cards. And if we look here, this is nine, this is one. So if I take these six cards and put them into my hand, um, the pack will still have 10 in there. So for the first turn, you know, you go through, you read all the cards, kind of like a draft in Magic, and you take them in hand. And you can essentially swap cards in hand in the pack, kind of however you want during the drafting process. Um, but once it's finished, you finalize the cards you take, then you, uh, you finish drafting, and then your hand in the pack becomes separate. And then this is your hand for the turn, and this is the pack, you know, for the draft. Um, so the turn process is first you draw cards, then you draft, then you play resources. Um, normally, to play a resource, you have to remove a card in your hand from the game. So... You know, if I didn't want this Soul Swallower, I would remove it and maybe like Fortune Negation to take two resources. Um, you actually start the game with essentially two free resources here, um, just to make the first turn a bit smoother. So, you know, we can trade these in to get like, let's just say I'm going Fire Fire. Um, so that's how you would start. Uh, the way you cast spells is quite a bit different than it is in Magic. Um, so a card like Goom, this is a threshold cost and this is the total cost. So in order to play Goom, these are playtest names, by the way, so <laughs> these cards are not finalized. Um, in order to play this, you would need two fire and then three total resources. So I can't play Goom this turn, but I could play Soul Swallower because I have a single fire. So he costs two resources and I can play him because I have a single fire. So I guess that's a good example. Um, just as a demonstration, let's say I had two water as well. I could still cast Soul Swallower using these two water. Um, it's very different than it is in Magic, but I can just do this because I have two fire. It doesn't matter if they're expended or not. Um, you just you can play it as long as you have a fire, and then to play it, you need two resources in general. So that's how that works. Um, so we'll put these away. So that would be my first turn. So the the turn order is draft or draw cards, then you draft. Then you play resources, and you just move right to combat. So there's no place for me to play creatures before combat in the first turn. Um, essentially, there just is no first turn combat step. Um, post combat, or the main phase, is when you play your creatures. So I would play my Soul Swallower. My opponents would do their other stuff. And then you move right into the next turn. So I actually, I put all my opponent's packs in places where I can't see them. So I'll just get another one. But essentially, let's say this was here. Um, I would pass my pack to the left. The person to my right passes their pack to me. Um, everybody draws two cards. And then you do the drafting step again. So this time I have seven cards in hand. So I'm going to end up taking seven cards total out of this pack. And you can, you can take the cards that were in your hand to begin with. You can take completely new cards. You can like completely pivot if you want. Um, there's a whole bunch of interesting things here, like aggressive one I like, uh, organic exchange, all-consuming blaze. Like there's just a lot of good stuff. So let's just say I don't know. This is my this is my seven cards. So again, you do the check. There are ten cards left in this pack. So I'm done drafting. Um, this time, because it's not the first turn, we don't get the free resources. So um, I can discard cards from hand, or delete them basically, they go on the bottom of the drafting pile, uh, in order to take a resource. So maybe I don't want this Ember of Life. And I can take a resource of any type, really no limitations there. And you can also take this two resource, uh, which is pretty good. Because you're basically getting two mana for one card. So it doesn't give you threshold, but it can be used to pay the cost of cards. 
So I'm going to take this for the case of demonstration here. Um, because again, threshold is just a minimum requirement. So I have two red. I can still play aggressive one. Or actually, I can tap this way. I can play aggressive one for two. I can play Gromlin for one. And I could still cast all consuming blaze this turn. Even though I only have two red, because it, it the red doesn't get depleted. It's just I have two red, I can play this stuff. So that would be it. Um, but so we've done drafting. We move straight to combat. And the combat stuff is what I want to demonstrate. So I'll show something like this. Um, in Algomancy, there's an initiative setup and everything. Um, it's more explained in the details of the write-up of basically one team has initiative, the other team does not, and you trade that off every turn. So let's say I have initiative. Um, we have to decide how we're going to attack, and then the red team gets to decide, you know, react to that, basically. So uh, let's say I want to attack here, and then my teammate, I'll give them like this thing. Maybe they also want to attack here. Then there's a priority step, so I can like play a kill spell on my opponent's thing. I'll give them another robot, though, for demonstration. So um, I can attack them and kill their stuff. So let's say I did that. Their robot dies. Then the red team gets a chance to attack later. So they get the disadvantage of not being able to move first, but they get the advantage of being able to, like, wait and see what the opponent does. So, you know, maybe I swung out and I'm low on life. So they're like, okay, let's, let's both attack uh, Caleb then. And then combat happens where this player would take all the damage from these two. If they kept creatures back, they could block both of these creatures. Um, if they had more creatures, they could keep back creatures to block and attack me. So there's a lot of dimensionality here. Each player can only interact with the zones to their left and their right. So I can only attack red base up here and red base over here. Um, in four player, that's kind of all there is. But you can imagine, you know, if there's six, eight or ten players, uh, it would get pretty big. But... I'm only interacting with three zones in total the whole game. Um, and then the, the final thing that's kind of specific to Algomancy is everything that's in this zone is completely isolated from any other zone. Um, so you can see cards like Soul Swallower says, sacrifice another creature in this region. So um, each one of these squares is a region. You can think of it as like an independent location in space. And... So if I had, let's say I had Emblem of War as an example. So this says sacrifice another creature in this region. Um, this operates similar to magic because so it's only creatures you control. If I have Soul Swallower over here, I can't sacrifice my Emblem of War over here uh, be because it's over here. So this is like one cohesive unit. And the idea is you can just look at this and resolve this skirmish on its own without having to care about anything else. Um, so that's, I think, the thing that trips people up the most. Uh, another example of this is like Emblem of War. Uh, whenever this enters combat, creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of combat. Um, so if I attack over here, Emblem of War has entered combat. This does not make the Soul Swallower bigger. It's only creatures in Emblem of War's region that would get bigger. So hopefully that's clear. Each zone is its own thing. It's very complicated, or not complicated, but I think it's just a bit different than how magic works, so it takes a little bit to understand. But the reason for doing that is, um, you can imagine if, it's more obvious with more players, but let's say me and this player are having a combat, and then the blue player up here is attacking this red player over here. Um, there's actually no interaction whatsoever between this region and this region, they don't share any players. So we can have our entire battle at the exact same time that they're having their battle. Um, and it just lets you run the game much more smoothly. Um, especially with six players, there's a lot less overlap of people. So you can actually run, uh, like, you could in theory run like five battles all at once. And it just speeds the game up tremendously. So that's the major reason for it, but it also makes it feel like a physical battlefield in space. There's a lot more specifics about it on the website, but or the tutorial article, but that's the gist of how it works, so you can attack people. Um, everyone starts at 30 life right now. Uh, we're, I think we're testing 40 life in multiplayer games. 
but uh, it just says 30 life here. Um, so that's the turn you attack, and then after combat is when you get to play all of your spells. So if I want to play like aggressive one, I can, and gremlin, I would do that. So the turn cycle we saw was I draw, I drafted, we do combat, then I play stuff. And then uh, it starts again, so you replenish all of your resources. Um, you would pass the packs again. I'll just take a new one for the sake of it. Everyone draws two cards. So this turn, um, I only have four cards in hand because I played a bunch of cards last turn. So I'm going to end with four cards in hand. So you do the same thing. You put all the cards into your pack. Um, maybe I want like the first flame to make some spells, soul tie, twin flame. And then I want to take a resource again. Um, I'm still seem to be in red, but let's pretend like I wanted to pivot into green. So let's say I wanted to play Sprouter. Uh, what I could do is take some cards. I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll take these as an example, even though they're not really in the colors. So if you do the count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've left ten cards in the pack, so I know that I've drafted the correct number of cards. Um, if I want to take green after the draft, I just get rid of these two cards from hand, and I take two wood resource. You can play a maximum of two total mana worth of resources. So that means either two with the factions or one of the colorless resources. So I could do this and then, you know, I could play this as my whole turn. Um, important thing to note, creatures are not spells in this game. So non-token spell means like specifically cards that say spell on them. Like this all-consuming blaze says spell, um, whereas creatures do not say spell. So they don't trigger the first flame. So, uh, yeah, so I would not play those this turn yet. Um, so we'd do that, we'd move to combat again. I could attack, you know, over here, keep this guy back to block my opponent. Um, we resolve this skirmish first. You know, they block or whatever. Um, there's specifics to the blocking formations. You actually assign a formation. So there's like front, back, adjacency matters type positioning stuff. I think that's covered more clearly in the article, but just so you're aware of it, you can basically choose to attack with something in front or behind um, and things like that. But, you know, you resolve this skirmish, you resolve this skirmish, maybe this dies and this dies. Um, at the end of combat, my creatures come back to my zone. Then I can play more spells. And the last thing worth mentioning is just graft and augment. A lot more in depth in the game or in the article, but basically anything that has this symbol on it, you can graft. So all of these have the templating of effect trigger. So whenever the first creature dies each combat, you get a 1-1. One, one. Um, you can pay the cost of a card from hand or your discard to put it underneath a card. Um, only cards that have the graft symbol onto cards that have the graft symbol. So now whenever the first creature dies each combat, you would read this as create a 1-1 one, one creature and this deals damage to any target equal to your red threshold, which would be two. And you can, right now, currently we're testing, you can make the stack go as big as you want. So um, if Emblem of War had died, you can graft it on it. And then you would make a creature, do damage to stuff, and then creatures you control get bigger. And you could just kind of go crazy. <laughs> you know, you could put this under it. Then each player sacrifices a creature. If a creature that's been augmented or modified dies, the whole thing gets deleted. Um, you know, you remove it from the game or put it on the bottom of the draft deck, essentially. That's graft. Augment is similar. Um, augment is for these plus symbols. Augment is different in that each augment ability is like a complete idea. So there's no uh, trigger or whatever. It's just an ability. So like aggressive one, at the end of combat, make an XX smoke creature. Where X is the number of attacking creatures in its formation. Um, augment, you can put it on the creatures the same as you can graft, but you can put it on any creature. So if this is in hand, I could put aggressive one onto Soul Swallower if I wanted to. And then Soul Swallower now reads, sacrifice another creature in this region. This gets plus two plus two until end of combat. And at the end of combat, you make a smoke creature. So you're just basically adding the text of the augment card onto Soul Swallower. Um, and you can put augment cards on anything. So you could put it onto Sprouter. And then this reads, 
Uh, when the first creature dies this turn, make a 1-1 one -one creature. And then a completely separately, at the end of combat, make a smoke creature. Um, generally, it's better to... Um, you can rearrange the abilities. Uh, you choose the order they happen on resolution. So if you've like modified this and you want to add all consuming blaze, um, generally it's just easier for the sake of things to like put all of your grafts first and then your augment uh, modifications or augments later. Just so you can like read them easier. I don't know what's going on there. But um, yeah, that's how augment works. And I think that explains anything. Um, if the cards that have been modified get returned to hand somehow, uh, this would go to your hand and all the modifications go to your discard. So that's one thing. Um, yeah, I feel like that's a pretty pretty quick introduction. Um, you die similar to magic when your life total goes below goes to zero. And there's initiative, which is, you know, you roll a dice basically to decide which team has initiative. So you have to move first. Um, you also do the same with your main phase. So the team with initiative takes their main phase at the same time. So, you know, while I'm playing creatures and grafting stuff, my other blue teammates are going to be doing the same thing. And then after that, the red team will do it. Um, in free-for-all mode, you just take all your turns at the same time. And you declare attacks using these tokens. So if you wanted to play like a four-player free-for-all instead of teams, uh, at the beginning of combat, you would have your creatures out and you would put these things face down in front of them. Uh, you could put them in a group or however you want it. And then you all, so let's say my opponent's here. Um, and then you flip up all of your tokens at the same time. So that would be like, I'm not attacking with these two, but I am going to attack with Emblem of War. And then this would be like, they're attacking me with both of these. And then, you know, we would have combat where I block here and here, something like that. So those are the different modes. Um, my best advice... Just join the Discord, come play some games, uh, get the feel of it. It's a really sweet game. You can play it with two players, up to 10. And in theory, you could play with up to 100 if you really wanted to. <laughs> I think that would get a little crazy, but it's mostly designed for six to eight. And two and four players work great too. Um, yeah, uh, happy to see you in the Discord. I'll be playing some games on this channel and on my main channel to give you a feel for like what the games actually play out like. So look out for those and I'll see you soon.